Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 11. John 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe, 
Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, what think ye, that he will not come to the feast? 
Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Oh, and I did 
Everybody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody I said praise the Lord. Today, you will glorify the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that gratitude of heart that the Lord himself will give you uh, come out of the great things the Lord will do. Amen. And everyone here and there, at the back, in the front, here the Alpha location, as well as online, everywhere, he'll wipe your tears away. He'll take your problem away. And whatever it is, you are asking the Lord for miracle today. Amen. Wonders today. Amen. And the Lord will grant you a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you and bless your name. We glorify you. Because you are a great God and a mighty God. And with you, all things are possible. We're asking, Lord, tonight that you'll move in an unprecedented manner in Jesus' name. And we pray that every problem, every sickness, every depression, every mental problem, every Demon will get out of the way of your people in Jesus' name. Miracles tonight. Salvation tonight. Healing tonight. Deliverance for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray today the assurance in your people. Unshakable assurance that you are the God of wonders and the God of power give it to everyone in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray look at the person beside you there and say the amen eyeball to eyeball tell them it will happen Tell them it will happen. The Lord is with you there. Miracles are waiting for you. Sit down with assurance that today the Lord will do and perform the wonders in your life. We're coming to Isaiah today, chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. It says, The Lord of hosts as swan saying surely as i have thought so shall it come to pass think about that as i have thought my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my thoughts so are my ways and so is my power greater than whatever you have and god said i have thought so shall it come to pass as i have purpose so it shall stand he has purpose that you will be saved that will stand he has purpose that you will be healed and that will stand he has purpose that deliverance redemption is available for you tonight nothing from the sky nothing from the sea and nothing from around you will hinder the purpose and the plan and the power of god in your life tonight in jesus name it shall stand it shall stand i'm looking at isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 isaiah chapter 40 i'm reading there from verse 28 it said as thou not known 
Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God is the God who had been from all eternity? He had solved the problems of the people from all eternity and from the uh, dawn of the day in the world. He has always solved problems. And he said, have you not heard? If you have not heard, I'm telling you now. He says, have you not known? If you have not known, I'm telling you, declaring to you now that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. It says, he fainteth not, neither is weary, and there is none, no searching of his understanding. And then in verse 29, he tells us he giveth power. You're powerless, you're having power tonight. You're weak, you're having power tonight. You're feeble, you're having power tonight. And you're shaking to the very foundation of your life. Power comes your way tonight in Jesus' name. And you've been bedridden, bedridden that you don't even have the power, the strength, the energy to rise up and walk and talk and see and move. But power comes to you tonight. Every feebleness, every sickness, every infirmity, the Lord will take away tonight in Jesus' name. Why? Because He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no understanding, no might. He increases strength in verse 30. It says in verse 30, even the youths who are supposed to be strong, courageous, and fearless, and bold, even the youth, if they depend on their natural strength and natural ability, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men, the power of the nation, the young men shall utterly fall. But now, in verse 31, he tells us, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It says, they shall mount up. As uh, with wings as eagles, they shall run. Somebody is right, ready to run there. The strength of their honor, the focus of their honor, the vision of their honor, and the perspective of their honor, and all the hindrances on the chase, they are broken, they are taken away. And now he wants you to run towards your destiny. He wants you to run towards everything he has prepared for you. And he says that they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not fail somebody shout amen. amen how and why will all this take place what's the foundation of the fulfillment and the performance of the word of god in your life look at isaiah chapter 53 and i'm reading there from verse 4 it says surely he christ he emmanuel he, the one that is to be born, he said, He has borne our griefs. He has carried away our sorrows. And yet, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. In verse 5, it says, In verse 5, oh, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Somebody shout amen. amen. With his stripes we are healed. I'm looking at verse 6. There's something here that is beautiful about verse 6. And I'll read it to you now, but let me tell you what I'm telling you that's wonderful. There's a man, that, there was a man, an evangelist, great, great evangelist, and his name is D.L. Moody. He had come to town, and he had done a great crusade, a mighty crusade, and many people have given their lives to the Lord and but there was this man this man was in that crusade he didn't give his life to the Lord he wasn't saved all of a sudden conviction came upon him I must be saved and D.L. Moody was already at the train station and then he was already in the train but he was by the window by the side of that train in his cabin and the man ran ran he wanted because the train was about moving up moving on and then the man shouted Moody, I want to be saved. What do I do? And Moody said, All 
at the beginning enter all at the end you're saved all then you say go read Isaiah 53 verse 6 all at the beginning everyone in the middle all at the end I come to tell you tonight that the wonder of salvation the wonder of healing the wonder of deliverance is now available for all at the beginning all at the end everyone in the middle look at that verse now chapter 53 of isaiah i mean from verse 6 it says all we like sheep have gone astray all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and we have turned everyone to his own way and then he says now all at the beginning all have sinned everyone has turned his own way and now he says and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and you can enter you can come in because salvation is now available for all and for everyone and anyone that will turn away from sin anyone that will believe on the lord jesus christ now all can be saved and you will be saved tonight yeah. healed tonight yeah. delivered tonight you are set free tonight you come from outside all have seen all in the world you have seen and now you say I'm like everybody else I feel the guilt I feel the oppression I feel the sense of punishment awaiting me like everybody else. But thank God that the Almighty God has laid on him, on Christ. Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, and Christ the Deliverer. The Lord God in heaven has laid on him the iniquity of us all that's why tonight all your sin will be taken away laid on christ that's why tonight the power of sin will be broken in your life because christ has born it all everyone all i'm talking to you tonight on unshakable assurance of wonders in god's word unshakable assurance that means you have the faith you have the trust you have the confidence that you know that you know beyond any shadow of doubt that your sins are laid on christ that your sicknesses are all laid on christ the blindness the deafness the cancer the ulcer the hunchback the, the tummy and the swelling everything laid on christ and tonight you are free yeah. i am free yeah. unshakable assurance of wonders in god's word three things we're looking at number one the promise of wonders in his will what's the will of god when some bad things happen to happen to people they say mm, that's the will of god they say i'll go through that when somebody is born in a condition like you know born blind or born deaf or born lame or uh, they say that's the will of god and they say i'll stay like that what's the will of god the will of god is her joy the will of god is her happiness the will of god is her deliverance the promise of wonders in his will number two the performance of wonders through his word the performance of wonders through his word number three the power for wonders as he works he works he works he's still at work at the work of creation he created man and then he goes on walking and walking he doesn't want us to be idle he is not idle he wants us to keep on walking he is also still walking and christ confirmed it and said my father walketh hitherto and i walk the almighty is still at work at work to save is mighty to save at work to heal is mighty to heal at work to deliver he is mighty to deliver the power for wonders as 
he walks look at number one number one is the promise of wonders in his will what's the will of god what's the will of god in my particular situation can i tell the leper came to christ and said if thou wilt he was not sure it was not certain what God, what Christ will do. That's why he said, if thou wilt, if you're willing, then you can make me whole. And Jesus put every doubt out of existence. And he said, I will be thou cleansed. And the leprosy went away tonight immediately. Your problem will vanish away. Look at you. Isaiah chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 14. And they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. And they shall cry aloud from the sea. It's telling us what the people will do. And then so Isaiah chapter 46. And we're reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46. And we're looking at verse 10. It says in verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure look at the promise of God and look at the declaration of God what he said he will do he said are you feeling the burden of your sin are you feeling the agony of the punishment to come do you sense what will happen if God does not show up but now he says I show up I know what you are going through I know the problem I know the challenge and he declared the end from the beginning and the and he has now from the ancient of times he has declared what has not yet been done saying my counsel will will stand the counsel of Satan will not stand in your life the counsel of evil people, evil powers will not stand in your life in Jesus' name. It says, my, 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 it's heaven talking. It's the God of heaven talking and declaring to us. And it says, my counsel shall stand and I will. And when God says, I will, nobody can say no in your life. It says, I will save you, salvation will come. It says, I will deliver you, deliverance will come. It says that everything you had planned from the beginning of creation until now, it says everything will stand. I will do all my pleasure. It will happen in Jesus' name. I say, chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 9. I say, chapter 25, and we're looking looking at verse 9 and it says it shall be said in that day lo this is our God we have waited for him and he will save us somebody shout amen there he will save us. That, that's a sinner like sin. I know how far I've gone. I know how deep I've gone. And I know I've scattered my life, destroyed my life by sinning. And I know the habitual sin, the common sin, the uncommon sin. I know the sin that I cannot get rid of by myself. I try. I punish myself. I restrain myself. I try to kind of gird myself so that I will will not continue in that sin, but I could not. But now he says, he has a confession. He has an assurance. And he says that this God will save me. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. He will be, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Tonight, you rejoice in his salvation. Tonight, a salvation will come straight, expressway, unto you right there and change your life and renew your life and transform everything in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 33 and I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 24, it says, And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. 
It says he'll so take every sickness away, every infirmity away, that the inhabitants of the kingdom, the citizen of the kingdom, the people who have turned away from sin, from darkness, and from evil powers, and they have come unto the Lord, it said those inhabitants will not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Do you see the connection? But when God created man, there was no sickness until sin came. It was the sin that brought the sickness. It was the sin that brought the, 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 the disease. It was the sin that brought all those negative things in our lives. But now, he says, because they are forgiven, because they are saved, and because their lives are turned around and they live now for the glory of God. He says, the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The Lord will take away every sickness from your body tonight. Every sin from your life tonight. And things are going to be very different, totally different, entirely different from your life in Jesus. Because it's the God, the God of covenant, and the God that assures us, and the God that says, I'm still alive, and I want to bless you, and I want to take everything of sin, everything of sickness, every satanic attack out of your life, and he said, whatever he purposes, and whatever he wills, that is what he will do. Congratulations, blessing upon your life tonight salvation coming to you tonight and healing coming to you tonight it will save you it will heal you amen. somebody shout amen. amen Isaiah chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55 and I'm reading from verse 3 Isaiah chapter 55 and we're looking at verse 3 in verse 3 it says incline your ear that means pay attention that means uh, throw away your former thinking, your former thoughts, because a new word is coming to you. A new assurance is coming to you. A new blessing is coming to you. Incline your ear and come unto me. Incline your ear and come unto unto me as you want the salvation of the lord tonight there's one step you need to take you need to come out of where you are come away from what you have been doing come away from the past life and come unto him want to him that implies you're being with a stranger and that stranger will destroy your life come to the lover of your soul you are being with satan he didn't create you all he can do he cannot improve on the work of god in your life all he can do is to decrease you diminish you and destroy you and he says come away from the destroyer and come to the deliverer and tonight the lord will deliver you completely in jesus name incline your ear if you are hearing other voices if you're hearing the voice of satan you are hearing the voice of unbelievers you are hearing the voice of your past life he says shut that up and now come unto me as you incline your ears and hear and your soul shall live I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. That's what he will do. He gives us assurance. Whosoever comes unto me, I will in no wise reject. He will not turn you away. You are coming today. You are coming with repentance. You are coming with a sober heart. And you are coming with a willing mind. And you are saying, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I'm willing to put my past in the past. I'm willing to bury all those uh, things, the dead things in my life. And the deadliness in my life. I want to bury that. And I come to the God of resurrection that will give me life. It will give you life. And then it will make an everlasting covenant with you. The show mercies of David. How do we come? It tells us right there. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us how to come. It says, seek ye Lord, seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him 
while he is near. It says at this time, look at people getting saved by your right hand. Look at people getting healed on that side there. And look at people getting healed and delivered at the Alpha location. And look at people getting healed and getting saved and getting delivered and getting blessed right there on like they said, this is the time that you seek the Lord while he may be found. And you call upon him while he is near. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. Let him return unto the Lord. Let him return unto the Lord. At the beginning we were with God. And then Satan came, separated us from God. And we have been separated from God all these many years. And the separation has brought terrible sins, terrible sickness, terrible suffering, and terrible havoc, trauma into our lives. And now it says, you know, where man was at the beginning of the creation, that time when we were with God, we had peace, we had joy, we had security, and we had victory, we had freedom. But now it says, since Satan, the old serpent, the devil, the dragon, has pulled us away from the place of peace and assurance, it says now, let him return unto the Lord with all our heart with all our soul we we'll say we've been far away from God we've been far away from the Prince of Peace we've been far away from the God of salvation and I will want that salvation we desire that salvation we desire that forgiveness and we want that new life by all means and it says yes you can God is still where he was a holy God a righteous God an unchangeable God is still where he was. We are the people that went away. And now he says, let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. As you return tonight, there will be mercy for you in Jesus' name. It's the mercy of salvation. It's the mercy of answered prayer. It's the mercy of a changed and transformed life. It says, let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you tonight in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your, are your ways my ways, says the Lord. In verse 9, it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts in verse 10 he gives us assurance he says for as the rain cometh down so your salvation will come down today and so your healing will come down today and so your deliverance will come down today as the rain cometh from and the snow from heaven and to return and returneth not hither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud. It says that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Then it says in verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word of salvation. It says so shall my word be. The word of healing. It says so shall my word be. It says the word of deliverance. The word of power. The word that works miracle. That works wonders in our lives. It says as the rain comes down from heaven and does not return there without doing what the Father, the God of heaven, has sent that rain to do. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth 
out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it the word of God will prosper your life tonight the word of salvation will prosper your life tonight and the word of healing and the word of wonders and the word of deliverance everything the promise of God the promise of wonders in his will will be done and achieved in your life tonight in Jesus name somebody there will shout amen I'm coming to point number two now point number two is the performance of wonders when we really know God we know that God is a God of action action according to his word action according to his promise action according to what he has said he will do that's what brings performance and it's always working always working always working and it works upon everyone the promise he has given to anyone in any nation, in any continent, in any city, anywhere, he fulfills the promise. He is the God of action and the God of performance. Number two, the performance of wonders through his word. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. It says in verse 8, the grass withereth and the flower faded what is this saying it's saying man like the grass and the word of man like the flower would they may use flowery language and they may use a kind of interesting attractive language and you hope in them but the words of men and the promise of men and the activities of men like the grass that withers and they're like the flower that fades away. It says, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Yeah. You missed a great amen. The word of our God, the word of salvation, the word of our God, the word of healing, the word of our God, the word of deliverance, the word of miracle, and the word of the promise of doing wonders, it says that shall stand forever. Uh, uh, you understand there are different people when they read the Bible, they don't uh, read the Bible with their natural eyes, their natural mind, their natural understanding. Some people, uh, they wear some colored glasses, theological, gla theological glasses, when they read the word of God. And so they say that the word of miracle has passed away. They say the word of healing has passed away. Why did they read that? Because here it says the word of our God shall stand how long? Forever. And those, uh, you know, people with uh, theological shade, glasses on, uh, they say the word of God, the promise of God, the power of God has passed away. They said when uh, the last apostle died in the first century, they said, since that time, uh, the power of God has been taken from the earth. Remove your glasses. I don't mean the ones you are wearing to read the Bible. I mean those denominational glasses. Remove them. And let's read it right now. Are we ready? I said, are you ready? The grass withered and the flower faded. But the word of our God, my God, the God of my salvation, the God who heals, the God who delivers, and the God who sets free. It says, the word of our God shall stand forever. That word will stand in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I said chapter 44, and we're reading from verse 28. I said, Chapter 44, verse 28, that says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my 
pleasure. Not only that he performs all his will, all his word, he also raises up people, whether they are princes, or they are preachers, or they are pastors, or proclaimers of the word of God, that God puts the power in them, that they will perform all his pleasure and then even saying to jerusalem thou shall be built and to the temple that foundation shall be laid the word of god will be performed in your life tonight yeah. we have the assurance because god says i am god i change not Beware of the assurance because he's the God of salvation. We have the assurance because he's the God who heals. That the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth, healeth, healeth in the present continuous tense, healeth all thy diseases. It's a God that changes not. It's a God that whatever he did in the past is still able to do today. In Isaiah chapter 45, and I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, and we're reading from verse 22. It tells us in Isaiah 45, 22, look unto me. You have looked in other directions, and those personalities you have looked at, and those professionals you have looked at, and those earthly powers you have looked at, they failed you. They have disappointed you. They couldn't forgive your sin. They couldn't erase your sin. They couldn't set you free from sin. They couldn't liberate you from the power and the hold of sin. And so it says, since you have looked there, it failed. You have looked there, it failed. You have looked there, it failed. You have looked at yourself and you have looked at resolutions you made. I will try my best. I will turn over a new leaf. That that will not happen again. It kept on happening year after I said now. I'm too tired of looking at the powers that cannot save, at the powers that cannot heal. And so he says, look unto me and be saved. Salvation has come. I said salvation has come. Look away from all the powers that fail, all the powers that cannot help you, and look unto me, all the ends of the earth, and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, the God who saves, I am God, the God who heals, I am God, the God who delivers, I am God, the God that performs all his word. I am God, and there is none else. And as you look today, salvation will come. As you look today, healing will come. And you know, he didn't put any restriction there as to maybe, uh, you know, if you have been going to this particular church, if you wash with this particular kind of water, and if you burn this kind of candle, and you follow this path, and you make this, he said, no, everyone, all the ends of the earth, online, everyone, on the radio, everyone, on the television, everyone, as we look tonight, salvation will come from the Lord in Jesus' name. Look unto me, Christ says, come unto me. Peter was around, he didn't say go to Peter, St. Peter. And John was around, he didn't say go to St. John. Can I tell you, the mother Mary was around and he didn't say, if you cannot get to me, get to her and you'll have salvation. No, nobody else is savior with Christ. A man, a woman, a virgin, anyone, no one else is co-savior with Christ. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. You are coming to the Lord tonight. Salvation, heaven sage, salvation, heaven approved, salvation, effective salvation, powerful salvation, total redemption coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. But remember, 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 look unto me. And be saved, and be healed, 
and be delivered and be set free and have your name in the book of life in heaven for I am God and there is none else we're coming to point number three now point number three is the power for wonders as he walks as he walks God is still at work our healer is still at work I thought you would say amen and because he's still at work that's why we come to him and before I read the other references I'm going to go to the very last one in John chapter 5 and I'm looking at verse 17 John chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 17 it says but Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto. My father walketh, keeps on walking hitherto. To this point, there are people that feel that God stopped walking, saving, delivering, setting free after he had finished the work of creation far back in genesis chapter one chapter two and they thought the father the heavenly father has stopped walking those people they do not read the bible well they don't read the bible aright they don't understand he walked at the time of noah he kept on walking he saved the people that believed they didn't understand he walked at the time of abraham and even spoke to abraham and then isaac the son was in a figure raised from the dead he walked in the time of joseph he gave him those dreams and he walked and he fulfilled everything walked in the time of Moses and I've said he said I've seen the affliction of my people Israel and I'm sending you come down I'm sending you to deliver them liberate them he walked at the Red Sea he opened the Red Sea and the Red Sea opened and they passed on he walked at the time of Joshua and Joshua said son stand there and he stood still and moved stand there and stand still he walked in the time of Gideon and Gideon was 300 able to destroy all those Midianites. They walked in the time of David, and David, by one, uh, by one sling of the stone, he killed and destroyed the greatest enemy of the land, Goliath. He walked in the time of Isaiah, and he said, Go tell that man, uh, Ezekiel, that saying to me that that fellow said, You'll all be dead, he'll not go back to where he was, and then God sent an angel and destroy 185,000 uh, soldiers in one night. God walks and he has not been walking. You are the next one now. He will walk in your life. It will walk in your body. It will walk through and through anything that is upside down. The Lord will turn it right side up. Anything of sickness, anything of infirmity, anything of evil power, attack in your life, all the attack will be taken away from your life in Jesus' name. My Father walketh hitherto, and I walk, and I walk, and I walk. And Christ said, he also kept on walking. The Bible says after Christ went to heaven, in Mark chapter 16, verse 19, it's in heaven now, and then it says in the next verse, and it said they all went out, and they preached the word, the Lord walking with them, even though Christ Christ had gone to heaven. Christ also kept on walking. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is now is about to walk on your body. Yeah. About to walk on those eyesight. About to walk on your hearing. About to walk in taking away all that infirmity away from your life. Your time has come. My time has come. The work of salvation, the work of healing, the work of deliverance. He is still working. In my life, it will work today. 
I said in my life it will work today. Let's now look at the, what work does he do? The father keeping on working, the son, Jesus Christ, a savior and Lord, what does Christ continue to do? The power for wonders as he works. We're looking at Isaiah again, chapter 53, and I'm looking at verse 4. In Isaiah chapter 53, we're looking at verse 4. Surely he has born our grief. That word born there is, it means to carry. He has taken, taken away. He has carried. He has removed. He has born. He has removed. He has carried our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and, but he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were healed. We are healed. We are healed. Let me tell you something. Before Christ came, I say I knew. That Christ was coming. You know, if a prophet declares something, he tells us, number one, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Emmanuel. And as we open the pages of the New Testament, the very first page, it says, you bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus, for he will take away and he will carry away and he will forgive his people's sins and then that's verse 21 in verse 23 it said that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zad the prophet that he'll bring forth a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel right online and then the same Isaiah he said unto us a child is born unto us a son is given his name will be called wonderful the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And he says, the zeal of the Lord shall perform this. He said that what he said in chapter 7 came true, Matthew chapter 1. What he said in, in, um, in uh, chapter 9, it came through Luke chapter 1. And now he says another thing. And he says that when he comes, he will die on the cross. And by his tries, do you remember how they put all those lashes on him before? he was born he said that and he said by his stripes we are healed and as we come to Matthew chapter 8 and in verse 16 it says in the evening they brought unto him all that was sick all that had the palsy and all those people they were healed that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet that by his stripes were healed and Christ was on, on earth then and after Christ went to heaven here Peter is writing and reminding us and he says Christ died on the tree that's in chapter 2 verse 24 that he might forgive our sins and we have the righteousness of God and then again he says by his stripes we were healed everything is said about Christ everything we see coming through and what he has said about but healing, it must come true in your life. Yeah. Your sickness must be taken away. Your infirmity must be taken away because he was wounded for transgression. So that all our transgressions, all our sins, all our um, terrible, terrible acts of evil, everything. That's why he was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, tell me, make it personal. I am healed. It is done in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16. We're looking at verse 15. It says in verse 15, and it said unto them, Go ye and preach the gospel. Go ye 
he told the world and preached the gospel to every creature look at verse 16 it says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned you see three people there number one christ that gave the command and the commission and he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature number two the believer the disciple the apostle that should go now christ has done what he should do he gave the command he paid the price and salvation is now available now we myself and those who are walking together with me here and in other places and i'm bringing the message to you from this place we that he spoke to that we should go into all the world that's what we're doing we're making the gospel come to every creature do so welcome and to all the nations. Now, the third person in all this arrangement is you there. He that believeth. Christ has done his part. Your salvation is available. Your healing is available. My healing is available. Your deliverance is available. And now, Christ gave the commission. We we're carrying out the commission. The gospel has got into you. Now you make your choice. Now you say, yes, I believe. I believe. I believe. And because I believe, I will be saved. Say amen. amen. And then I will be healed. Say amen. amen. I will be delivered. Say amen. amen. And now he says in verse 17, in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you understand that? These signs shall follow them that believe. What it means is this, that if as I, for example, I can see you, but let me just use the illustration, I he told me to go, and then I go, I go, GCK, and we come here, we come there, and he says, these signs shall follow me. How do I understand that? As my shadow follows me, and the shadow does not say, uh-uh, when you are in a bori, I'm your shadow, I followed you. And when you are in, a, tell me, Enogon. When you are in Adamawa, Yola. When you are in Taraba. When you are at Eba. When you are in Lagos, I in the shadow. I followed you. You are going to Asaba. I don't like Asaba. So, shadow stays behind. Can that happen? No. While the sun of righteousness is shining. And it shines on the person moving, and it's moving and moving, the shadow will keep on following. Amen. Therefore, it says, Preacher, I send you go forth, and as a shadow follows you every time, and Satan cannot change that, and people cannot change that, and the community cannot change that. Everywhere you go, as I send you, your shadow will be following in the same way. It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. I believe. I believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues now every time gck shout gck miracle gck, GCK deliverance GCK. it's always following these signs and these wonders and this miracle shall 
follow them that believe and every gck event the gospel for every creature miracles has always been following that is why sometimes i will show you look at this look at this miracle it always follows every gck event and this one today miracles will follow and I'm looking, I'm calling on Mrs. Patience who had suffered several, several miscarriages for many, many years. And the doctors even told her something that this is now impossible. But GCK does not know impossibility. In your life, in my life, miracles will always follow in Jesus' name. I'm going to bring uh, Mrs. Uh, Patience to talk to you and to let you know that here is a miracle, a miracle, maybe not, you might have heard it before, you might have seen this before, but this one is bringing new power into your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Mrs. Patience. Talk to us now. Okay. By the special grace of God, I got married in the year 2014. So ever since then, I've been trying to conceive or to know I've heard. So the year 2017, that was the year I conceived. I lost the baby. I lost the pregnancy. I miscarried the child. So after that incident, I was able to conceive about five times again. I had miscarriages. So the last one happened in the year 2020. So after that one, I was unable to conceive again. After much treatment, I didn't conceive. So my gynae doctor asked me to go and conduct uh, an test that they call HSG, which was conducted, and it shows that my two tubes have been blocked as a result of the previous miscarriages that was wrongly carried out. The evacuation was not properly done. So, it affected my fallopian tubes and the tube was blocked. This is a classic case of infertility, the worst you can think of. The problem was that her womb cannot carry a baby. Her tubes are blocked. And the doctors confirmed from testing she cannot carry a baby. Zero chance of her being able to carry a baby. When I came back, I was so shocked. I couldn't believe it. I was like, ah, where will I start from? So that January, we had this same program, this GCK program, Total Freedom Through Faith in Christ. I went to the program with the results, with the extra results, the fourth day, the second day, the third day, if the man of God wants to pray, I will raise the, the extra result up by faith. I will claim it. So at the end of the program, February, that I'm supposed to see my menstruation, I didn't see it. I was not really expecting pregnancy because I didn't, I didn't take any medication. I thought maybe it's delaying. So after some time, I reluctantly took a pregnancy test that came out positive. I went to the hospital to see my gynae doctor. He couldn't believe it. He said I should go to the lab. They should use my blood to carry out the same test, which they did. And the pregnancy came out positive again. The doctor was confused. How come? So at the end of everything, God blessed my family through this wonderful program. God blessed my family with this wonderful boy. As you can see, he's growing healthy and strong. He's a wonderful boy. And I called him, anytime I look at him, I called him GCK baby. Because it is through this program that God is our Father in the Lord to bless my home. May his name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Amen. And somebody shout, Amen. Miracle baby. GCK baby. GCK healing. GCK wonders. These signs shall follow them that believe. No exception. Just believe. 
Why wouldn't you believe? He's done it for others. And Christ is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, I believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. In verse 18, they shall take off serpents, throw them away. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. There are people who think, me, I don't drink any deadly thing. Sugar, deadly. And sometimes you want salt, they say that thing. I didn't understand that before. They say that thing is deadly. And all the various things we put and put and put in our food, they cause, uh, you know, this hypertension and diabetes and quite a lot of things. And even they deem your sight. But now it says all those things were mistakenly taken uh, this way, that way. And we cannot deal without them. Uh, the Lord says all the repercussion and consequences, he has taken everything away. <laughs> Diabetes will be healed in your life. Whether it's diabetes 1 or diabetes 2, everything cleared away tonight in Jesus' name. And then all the ashman and all the ernia and all the fibroid and all the hunchback and all the limbness and everything taken away tonight in Jesus. Because it says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick. Ah, Pastor, that doesn't happen here. How do you know it doesn't happen? Didn't you hear when I normally say you stand up? And when you stand up, if you're sick, raise up one hand. And then I say, let me your hand. Let me your hand. If I came to you there and lay my hands on you, but you know, we're many here. And then we're many online. And we're many in all the various locations. I say, use your hand to represent my hand and lay your hand there. I'm laying hands on everyone. I said, I'm laying hands on everyone, and it says, they, 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 not only one man, not only one woman, they shall lay their hands on the sick and tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me, you recover tonight in Jesus' name. Miracle in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Power manifestation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. In verse 19 it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. He's, he's finished now. He's provided salvation. He's provided the healing. He's provided the deliverance. And now he sat down to watch the result of Calvary and the result of what he has done. And so we're told in verse 20, in verse 20, and they went forth, I come forth, I've come to you. Good things will happen to you. Healing will happen to you. Deliverance will happen to you. Salvation will come your way tonight in Jesus' name. And they went forth and they preached everywhere the Lord walking with them. He has not stopped walking. He's going to walk today. He has walked yesterday, he will walk today in your case. The Lord walking with them and confirming, confirming, confirming the word, the word of salvation, confirming the word and the word of transformation in our lives, confirming the word and the word of healing, deliverance, miracle, wonders, confirming the word were signs following. Signs following. Wonders following. Miracles following. Amen. That means so it is, so it was, so let it be right now. Your miracle has come. Your salvation has come. Amen. 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 Amen.
and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Salvation is not available for everyone. That means he'll forgive you. That means he'll set you free. That means he'll pardon you. That means he'll purge you. That means he'll take away the punishment of all sin away from your life. And he'll break the power of sin in your life. Salvation is now available for everyone. You write your name in the book of life in heaven. And when you leave this world, you go to a prepared mansion for you in heaven. It's bowed, eyes closed. You want that salvation of the Lord. You want that freedom from sin. And you want him for the pain of heaven. To write your name in the book of life wherever you are over there raise up your hand praise the lord god bless you there raise up that hand raise up that hand think about this and all the sins of your life put them behind you and say by the grace of god i turn away from them I repent of all of them I will not continue in them anymore raise up that hand and say, Lord, here am I. I'm a candidate for your salvation, for your forgiveness, for your freedom. I'm a candidate for eternal life. I want eternal life with God, with Christ forever and ever. I don't want to go to hell and be with Satan forever in hell. Raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, Please stand up right there and tell the Lord, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You now become soldiers of the cross and bear his garment of righteousness from now on. Stand up with your hand raised. The Lord bless you there. And the Lord give you assurance and reassurance of your salvation in Jesus' name. When you are standing there between you and the Lord, quietly tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I turn away from my sin. I repent of my sin. I separate completely with all the sources and the agents of sinfulness. And I want the life of Christ to enter into me so that as I go out now after tonight, that miracle of salvation would have happened and I go out clean and I go out free, and I go out having the salvation of the Lord with me, eternal life, every time. We're going to pray now. Please, if you're not sure of your salvation, rise up now so this prayer will be for you as well. Turn away from sin, repent of sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ when you are repented. And then salvation will come to you. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, all these who have indicated that they accept, they receive, they believe on Christ to be their Lord and Savior, save them in Jesus' name. All the guilt of sin, Take away from them. Break the power of sin from their lives in Jesus' name. Remove, take away the punishment of all the sins they have committed in the past. Set them free. Give them life eternal. Help them, Lord, to have the witness of the Spirit of God. They are now children of God. And keep them and hold them, uphold them by your mighty hand so that they will not fall back into their vomit, into their old life anymore in Jesus' name. Confirm that salvation of the joy of your presence in their hearts. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am saved. Say that aloud. I am saved.
the Lord confirm it for you in Jesus name our counselors are now there members of the choir and counselors workers Christian church workers you are there they are there now to give you sleep and to feel that feel it correctly and the salvation of the Lord will be evident in your life in Jesus name we call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us during this time of counseling and then after that i'll come back to pray for your guaranteed healing in jesus name congratulations welcome into the kingdom of god angels are rejoicing the host of heaven they are rejoicing over your life. Bye bye to sin. You are now a saint of God. And the Lord will keep you in that experience in Jesus' name. For those who are watching online, and you just gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ now. After the pastor's message, as you've given your life to the Lord now, check below your player. You will see a click there. By the grace of God, as you see it, click it and complete the form there so that we can be of more help to you and see how you will further in your salvation experience. Once again, you gave your life to the Lord. As you are watching online now, we want you now to please look below the player you are using. Click to what is there. You will discover a form there. Complete it. Then, Send it. We then be able to continue to follow you up. Cancel us. Let's cover everywhere. As you finish where you are there, look for others and see how to be of help to them. If you are watching over television or you are listening to radio and you gave your life to the Lord this evening, please we want you to please send your name, send your phone number to the, to the WhatsApp number I'm going to call now so that we be of further help to you. Plus 234-915-4242. Sixty-three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two sixty-three. As you complete that, by the grace of God, our pastor will continue to be of more help to you in Jesus' name. There will be a special meeting tomorrow. We call it Lunch Hour with Jesus at 3 p.m. In this very place here, you'll be directed. As you come tomorrow, 3 p.m., you'll be attended to. So all those who gave their lives to the Lord here in this Alpha location and we want you to make sure tomorrow you are here. Those who gave their lives to the Lord right from the beginning, they are becoming. Then more than that, they will be convert rally in every location globally on the 5th of January 2023. Convert rally on the 5th of February. We are in January now. There will be convert rally globally all over the world in every location 
So we expect all our converts to converge in the various centers you are told. 3 p.m. is the time. For Saba here, it's 3 p.m. And it will take place in Deeper Life Bible Church, Headquarters Church. Is in the near streets. Deeper Life Bible Church Headquarters is the near streets. We expect you will be there by the grace of God. So, please cancel us. Look all around. When you finish, let us know. Remember, your miracle is hanging right upon your head now. It's going to descend on you. As the man of God filled with the Holy Ghost, we come forward very soon. The power of the highest will knock off every sickness, every disease from your life. Tonight is your night. Start telling that problem bye-bye because the problem you see now in some few minutes' time, you will see them no more. They are all going to vanish. You will not see them again. They are all getting out of your life. And by the grace of God, the Lord will continue to bless you. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready. Very, very soon, the power of God will touch you. You are going to give testimony today. Today is the day heaven has written for you that that problem will not continue in your life. Cancel us when you finish. Then remain where you are. Don't go away. Remain at that very spot because you are going to help those who are there, the lame, as you give your hand to them. The power of God will transcend from here to where you are with them there and the lame will be raised. The lame will be raised. You will be the one to talk to the deaf, and you see them hearing. Then you will bring them out. You are going to be the one that is going to, by the grace of God, uh, uh, speak to those who are dumb. You see them speaking plainly. Then you bring them out. Everywhere you are is miracle spots. The blessing of heaven is coming upon everyone. Get ready. Get ready for your miracle. Don't live where you are. Cancel us. Remain there. Remain there. Because God is going to use you as you encourage them. Their faith will connect and heaven will bless every one of them. Cancel us when you are finished. You let us know. Today, your expectation will be met. You saw it yesterday. You saw how the power of God went out. Day before yesterday, you saw it. You saw how people were trooping out. Today is your day. Today is your day. God is going to perform raw miracle in your life. Your neighbors will rejoice with you. Naked miracle. We all will see and celebrate with you. Get ready. Very soon, the power of God will touch you. I can see many of you already. You are getting ready. Today is your day. Today is your day. Cancel us when you are ready. Let us know, please. Okay, you finished over there. 
Wave your hand at me if you are finished. Okay, this side at the middle, they are finished. At my right hand side, wave your okay. Over there, they are finished. Then at the towards the end at the extreme that side, can I see? If you are finished, wave your hand at me. At my left hand side. If you finished, wave your hand at me. Okay, they have all finished. Praise the Lord. My time has come. Are you standing or sitting? Standing for the miracle. Standing for the power of God. And standing for the assurance of the wonder of the provision of the Lord in your life tonight in Jesus' name. God is still working. Christ is still at work. And as we give our bodies to him, whatever is wrong there, he will heal. He will heal. He will repair. He will recover. And at the final amen, everything is done. And those online, and those who are by the radio, and those who are by the television, you understand? It's working here, it's working there, it's working with you, it's working with us, it's working everywhere. Your miracle of healing, deliverance is tonight in Jesus' name. Raise up one hand, you are telling the Lord, you are raising the hand to heaven, I need a healing, I need recovery, I need deliverance, I need total breaking of every yoke in my life. Raise up that hand and then you are laying the other hand on yourself and uh, that if I were with you, I'll be able to lay hands on you, but now you lay the hands on, on yourself and you're standing for me there and at the final, amen, miracle will happen in your life. Yeah. We're ready now, are you ready? Heaven is ready. Are you ready? Yeah. And that healing is available now. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh, no, Lord, you cannot fail. And your power will never fail. And your touch will never fail. And Lord, anywhere, everywhere, everyone is before you now looking up to you and you have said look unto me and be ye healed and be ye saved and be ye delivered all the ends of the earth we pray now anywhere everywhere people are here at the alpha location and there online everywhere touch them transform them heal them in jesus name all those places they are laying their hands now, I pray that your power will flow through. Yeah. Your healing will flow through. Yeah. Your deliverance will flow through. Yeah. Heal your people, everyone, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Yeah. The pain in your body, I command that pain vanish away in Jesus' name. Yeah. The bleeding, the suffering, the cancer, the ulcer, the tuberculosis, the HIV AIDS, and everything to mention anyone there at this very moment I speak the word of authority against that thing. Be healed in Jesus' name. 
that recurrent problem, that incurable disease, that thing you've gone here and there and there, and yet all those things remain. I pray nothing will stand between you and your healing. No, no hindrance to your healing tonight. And therefore, Lord, the God of all flesh, I pray that you look at all your people, heal them tonight in Jesus' name. Blind eyes, dim eyes, be opened in Jesus' name. Deaf ears and dumb tongues be loosed in Jesus' name. Aching joints, arthritis, be released and healed in Jesus' name. Breathing problem, asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. Swelling in any part of your body. I pray that the hand of the Lord will touch your hand now and go through all that swelling. Be removed in Jesus' name. And all the prayers you have prayed, wanting healing, wanting deliverance, wanting total freedom, the Lord confirm it right now. The Lord confirm your healing. The Lord confirm your deliverance. The Lord confirm your miracle. And the Lord confirm wonders upon your life here, right, left, front, center, at the back, online, in every country, every congregation. Power manifestation now. In Jesus' name we pray. That final amen has brought your miracle to become reality. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. Check up yourself now. Your miracle is there. You must not, uh, you know, run away. Remember, Elijah told the servant, go and see him. I saw nothing. Stay there and check up. And then go again. I saw nothing. Go there, check up. Check up. Don't uh, you know run away. You are in a hurry for anything. This is what you came for. You came for having your miracle. That miracle is there. Amen. You will see it. Amen. Amen.